Hello everybody once again. You know when you print something and you have to choose a particular paper choice, especially if you're using Canon papers, Epson papers, and you're dealing with the correct matching printer, you click that media menu and you get some choices and you find that one that matches the paper you're using. Oh, there it is. You click on it. What does that really do? What is that really telling your driver to have your printer do, for instance? Is it, is it a profile? Is it having anything to do with color? Not really, not really. Color is managed by something else, an ICC profile. And that lives actually inside your computer's hard drive, not in your printer. So those menus, those choices for media dictate other things, physical parameters that certain papers require. It has to do with thickness. It has to do with the surface type, uh, whether it is glossy, very, very glossy, whether it is just luster, which is a lower gloss level. Maybe it's a satin, really low gloss, but kind of smooth. Um, and so forth, and even matte surfaces, okay? So if you have a printer that has multiple blacks, a matte black ink, and also a glossy, so-called glossy photo ink, then that becomes a very important thing because it will tell the printer to use a specific type of black ink whenever you are using a certain type of media. What about, say, an Epsom paper that happens to have a thicker base. Well, that particular paper choice will set the printhead to paper gap higher. In other words, a wider gap because it knows the paper is thicker. If it does not adjust that to the optimum distance that the nozzle plate has to be over the paper surface, you may end up with a head strike. So, once you pick the correct paper, all of these things, all of these changes will be made, will be pre-programmed for that particular job. One very important thing that people don't understand is that papers require a certain density of ink. And by that, I mean volume, basically more ink. Let's just call it more ink. Certain papers require a smaller amount of ink, a less lesser amount of ink to create for instance a set of standard shades so let's just use middle gray black and white is nothing so a glossy paper because has very little absorbance and very little dot gain dot gain means the wicking of a little droplet does it spread or does it remain contained and sharp edges you know so a glossy paper requires a less volume, total volume of ink to create a specific density. We'll call it a density. A matte paper requires more ink. It's not going to look darker overall. But it just requires more ink to produce the same exact density where you can measure it with a spectrophotometer and it will be correct. It will match this one. Even though it used less ink, reads correctly. This other paper, even though it required more ink, also reads correctly. So, unless you're doing thousands of prints, the difference in, in ink usage is going to be very minimal anyway. But I'm just letting you know that that's part of the function of choosing a specific media type. It will set that density requirement, ink density requirement for you automatically now here's the tricky part you're using someone else's papers and even though they will tell you oh our paper is a luster paper use pro luster canon pro luster on your canon printer well canon pro luster is a specific thickness 
that paper may be thicker or it may be thinner. So there you have a discrepancy. And when you choose Pro Luster, Canon is just going to take the Canon driver that is, is going to apply the parameters, assuming that you are printing on Canon Pro Luster, but you are not. You're printing on someone else's paper that just happens to have a Pro Luster looking surface, but it's thicker. Okay, so that may cause a problem. You need to have a printer that has an adjustable gap setting. And if you do get some head strikes or maybe some smudges or scratches, it can happen. Then you increase the gap and you keep testing until you reach a happy point where there are no more head strikes being produced. And then you use that particular setting every time you print on that paper that even though it has a luster surface, just like Canon Pro Luster, happens to be thicker and more prone to head strikes. So yeah, it's very tricky. So the only time that you need to mess around with this is when you're using other manufacturers papers that may not really match. They have to give you a, 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 a guess, I guess you can say, of what paper choice to pick on your driver. Now, if there is a media configuration file available for that particular paper, and you're using a high-end Canon printer, for instance, such as the Pro 1000, that you can use the media configuration tool, take that file, load it, and then export it directly to your printer, my Pro 1000, and it will show you exactly those particular papers. Let me quickly show you what that looks like. It's rather interesting. And these are the only, as far as I know, these are the only family of printers that allow you to do that. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, though, so here we are on the Canon Pro 1000 series printing preferences page on the driver. We are set to photo print and we go here to the media type and we have our plain paper, we have our photo papers, we have uh, photo paper plus glossy two, platinum, luster, semi gloss, and photo paper, which is just a matte photo paper, I should say. Fine art papers, we have photo paper pro premium matte canvas premium fine art smooth and photo paper for pro premium matte a now some red river papers and they're telling me to use a certain paper choice found in that drop down menu i just showed you but like i said the paper's parameters are different so what do i do well i download their media configuration file process it through the media configuration tool and then send it to my driver watch custom there they are paladuro etching san gabriel burrita aurora art natural aurora art white blanco matte canvas paladuro soft gloss rag when i load any one of those papers and i actually print on those papers it's going to adjust for every physical parameter that those papers actually require even though this is a matte paper it is different than just plain matte photo paper. It is different. It has different thickness. It has different dot gain. It has different ink level or ink density requirements and so forth. It also needs to be printed on matte black ink and so forth. So you see how important it is to have these special files installed. And again, sadly, I don't believe you can do that on Epson printers, only on the Canon Pro 1000 and up. Having that luxury then allows you to just actually pick that particular paper. Normally, you would have to choose a facsimile and then hope that the thickness has been taken account for. And of course, it hasn't because there's always going to be a difference in thickness between a Canon paper choice that sort of looks the same as the one I got from Hannah Mule or Moab or Red River or whomever, Ilford. You get the drill you will need to have a specific file for that paper that has been created by them that takes into account ink density requirements, black ink requirements, matte black or photo black, and of course, the thickness of the papers and a few other things that are included in that. All right, so there, yeah, it's, it's not so easy. It's not just pick a paper and color management will be set for you automatically. There is a kind of a way you can do that with Canon papers on a Canon printer and Epson papers on an Epson printer, sure. 
but I always recommend that you let the application do the color managing for you instead of the driver. Yeah, you can use the driver, but it's not as exact as using your application to control color management through the correct ICC profile. All right, I hope that wasn't too confusing for everybody. But again, this is just something you have to kind of learn and then apply to all your future printing, especially when you get to the point where you feel that you're more advanced at this craft. All right, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And as always, happy printing, everybody. And happy new year coming up very soon. Bye-bye, everyone.